entering Penn State campus, and this is in State College, Pennsylvania. The campus is situated in a small valley between the Nittany Mountains, which is obviously where they got the nickname for the Nittany Lions. Penn State was founded in 1855 as a state land-grant college. It has undergone it has gone under its current name since 1963. Over 36,000 students attend a Penn State campus. The faculty consists of over 1,600. Penn State's tradition of quality education is enhanced by undergraduate and graduate programs, graduate faculty members, and research facilities. 11 colleges offer 123 four-year programs and 31 two-year programs. Within these programs are over 150 more options for further specialization. Research is easy at Penn State Library, one of the top 10 land great grant college libraries in the nation. Among the many colleges at Penn State are the Colleges of Agriculture, Business Administration, Education, Engineering, Science, and Liberal Arts. Penn State's tradition of quality academic programs also is important to employers. This is why Penn State's placement record continues, continues to be excellent. Penn State is one of the nation's leading suppliers of new employees to business and industry. Last year, over 1,000 employers participated in on-campus recruitment. Penn State is also well known for its athletic program. Even people who know little about football would recognize the Penn State Nittany Lions. A beautiful campus and quiet country-like atmosphere makes Penn State an attractive choice for the college-bound student. There you see the Nittany Lion, the symbol of Penn State University. In this bowling camp, which took place in August, there was a total of 40 participants, and out of the 40, eight of them were from the state of Delaware, which is a pretty good record. Coming up now, you actually get a chance to see where the bowling center is located in the campus. It has 12 lanes on one side, and it has 16 lanes on another side. In the total group, they had bowlers from Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Of course, we had eight bowlers from Delaware. They also had bowlers from the state of New York and various other areas on the East Coast. Penn State is well known for its beauty. There you have a close-up of the bowling center. They had many outdoor activities there as well as indoor activities. They had racquetball and handball. And there's a swimming pool coming up. And how much time did you spend swimming, Dave? About four hours swimming. You got a chance to swim every day while you were there? Yeah, you had a chance, but we didn't do it every day. And here you see the tennis courts coming up. And did you get a chance to play tennis? Yeah, we got, I got to play tennis the second day I was there, and then we, I, me and Donald played tennis at Lacombe, and that was the only time we played. And what other activities did you have while you were up there? Well, you could do anything you wanted, racquetball, you can play squash, and anything you wanted. And arcade, that was it. They had an arcade up there? Yeah, that's where we usually went. Here you see some more of the scenes, the dormitories of the college. This is where the students were housed. And this is what one of the rooms looks like. Yeah, that was, that was, um, can't think of the guy's name. Sarge? Room. Was that was the Sarge? Paul, Paul, some kid from New Jersey, and Paul, Paul Critch and Sarge. We're talking about Mark Burns. And here we are getting ready to go out the door of the Penn State campus. And we'll be right back with more right after this. Now is Pat McClellan, and we are at Penn State campus at State College, Pennsylvania, with the bowling camp. And Pat, I believe this is the second camp of this season. Uh, yes, it is, Gary. We've run two camps, one the last week of June and one the, this week in August this year. First time for two camps in one summer. This is a co-ed camp, is that right? Uh, yes, it is, and the athletes, bowlers are housed in separate dormitories here at Penn State. And 
how many bowlers do you have this year? This year, at this particular camp, we have 42 campers. Uh, the first camp was a little bit smaller, and I believe there was around 35 campers. Did you have room for other campers, or do you try to limit it? Uh, yes, we did. We tried to put the cutout point at about 60 bowlers, so both camps were a little bit below the cutoff point, actually, but I think a lot had to do with the fact that the June camp was too close to this end of school. So next year we're going to probably run one solid camp and uh, schedule at the end of July. How many years have you been involved with the Penn State program? This particular camp has been offered in this Penn State Sports Camp program for three years, and I've been involved all three years. The first year, uh, we had over a hundred and some kids and utilized both lanes here at Penn State and realized that it was just too big. So in years since that, we've cut it back to uh, smaller camps. And last year, we held one that had 70-some kids, and this year now the two camps with 40 and 30. Some. How many instructors do you have working with you? This year there are four instructors, including myself. Uh, last year I had six instructors, including seven instructors, including myself, for the 70 kids. So we're running about a 1 to 10 ratio. Uh, who are your other instructors? My other instructors this year have been Dwayne Fisher, who is from Pensac in New Jersey, and is a very avid bowler himself and has recently been doing quite well on the Eastern Regional Circuit. Uh, one tournament in New York, the Bowlers Classic, where he beat the likes of Mark Roth and Johnny Petraglia, and has just recently finished third in an Eastern PBA Regional tournament up in Long Island. And how old is he? He, I believe, is 21 years old. And in addition to him, I have Joy Palambi, who is a bowler on the East Coast as well from New Jersey and is a very avid Wassa bowler and is a, operates a pro shop in Maple Shade, New Jersey. And then in addition to those two, there's Don Farrell, who is the Penn State bowling coach and has been involved in Penn State bowling for approximately seven or eight years back, even when I was bowling for Penn State. Pat, what years were you here as a Penn State student? I attended Penn State from 1972 to 1976 and was on a bowling scholarship, athletic scholarship, one of the first ones granted at Penn State, and bowled for the varsity team for four years. And I know you're on the Pro Tour. How have you done lately? Uh, Gary, I was out full-time in 1978 uh, for one solid year, and since that time I've been bowling basically on a part-time basis, and recently, due to my commitments at Drexel University in Philadelphia, I've been unable to bowl as much as I would have liked. However, I intend to bowl in two weeks up in the Fairhaven, Massachusetts tournament, and maybe get back into the swing of things, hopefully do some touring every summer now from here on out. Uh, Mr. Farrell, He's in charge of the Penn State program. Is he looking at any of these kids as potential future bowlers for Penn State? I would imagine. I think maybe if you'd talk to him, he could give you a better idea, but I'm sure that he uh, would like to see some of these bowlers come up and bowl for Penn State because we do have a lot of potential here at this camp and, and camps previous. He, I know he will talk to any student, not only about Penn State collegiate bowling, but about collegiate bowling all over the United States and give them an insight as to what's offered. Pat, I thank you for joining us here today. Thank you, Gary, for bringing your crew up. We enjoyed having you, and hopefully uh, are going to be able to put on a good show for the people in Delaware. Thank you, and we'll be right back right after this. Here we are back with another interview, another bowler who went to Penn State, and this is Jim Callahan. You can tell he went to Penn State. He's got his Penn State shirt on. What was the one thing out of all that you learned up there? What was the most important thing? concentration because they stressed it so much up there and and spare shooting because we worked on that every day we put we did individual games on seven pins and ten pins and we and they stressed that a lot up there which uh, of the coaches would you say helped you the most uh, coach Farrell coach Farrell mm -hmm. which which of the coaches did you like the most Dwayne Fisher he was the young fellow yeah why did you like him because he was more your age he, he, he related to us better than the other coach because the other coaches were ladies except for Coach Farrell. And he explained things really well. Out of, um, what, what other kind of activities did you do while you were up there besides ball? We swam and we played basketball and we 
just went down in town and played the arcade games and things like that. It's kind of hot up there, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have any air conditioning. And I had a bone out. It was really bad. That might be one of the reasons why they didn't have as many bowlers this year as they did last year. I guess th they're expecting next, next year just to have one squad because they didn't have as many in their two squads this year. Yeah, I think the first squad kind of hurt them because it was too early in the season. Some of the high schools weren't even out of school, so that might, that might have had something to do with it. Since you've come back from the camp, you've been back about a month now. Yes. What is your average? Oh, about um, 100. It's about 187 now. Have you seen a marked improvement since you went up? I saw a marked improvement in my spare shooting. My strike, my strike shooting is not that much better. I still make the same mistake over and over. Now. <laughs> well, at least you're consistent. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're consistent, you can find a way to solve it. Uh -huh. Well, this is another interview. We're going to be back in a couple minutes. We're going to have some more interviews. But right now, we're going to show you some more of the scenes from Penn State. You're going to get to see one of the coaches up there in the instruction room where they Okay, on the first page is some ball drilling, drilling basics. How many people have uh, rolling balls built, drilled by a pro shop? Okay. It's the only place to get a rolling ball drill. Someone who knows what they're doing about a rolling ball. And what now you're going to ball. If you go to a store and buy it, the store you're going to get a ball that's not drilled right to fit your hand. A lot of your rolling balls, you find out this week that they may not be drilled right, your hands are hurting. If you're having a lot of problems with when you go home, go back to the person that drilled your ball. The angle, you see everybody using the angle, which is the softest MF ball you can buy. And on the Brunswick, it's the LP48 and the edge. And most of you people here have yellow dots. And then the white dot is a little harder. For people who are just learning how to bowl a medium type of bowling ball, medium rubber, medium plastic, it's probably the best ball for you to have. If you want to get something that's too soft and you're just learning how to bowl, you're going to get frustrated with, with the ball hooking too much for you. So you want to get something in between when you're first learning how to bowl. And as you get better and improve, then you start buying the more expensive bowling balls, the angles, the edges. The UC2s, pulling balls like that, where you have a little more, you will get a little more impact, a little more striking power out of a softer ball on its laying conditions and price. <laughs> What's the difference between the mag? The mag? The mag 12 is, is the um, poly, poly thing, and the mag 11 is the, the rubber thing. And what's the plastic? The what? The mag 10. They're the old ones. One they're not know too much about them. The green one was the one we let you to use. that way, and only because the lanes haven't been conditioned with nobody's bowling on them. So you're drying here. This is simple. this is what they call a reverse flop, where there's oil on the outside of the lanes and very dry in the middle, which is what happened earlier. Then they oiled the lanes for you, but you still have a very, very heavy buildup out here, and there's oil, they put oil in the middle, so you come with... <laughs> probably a little heavy on the outside, but it's pretty, pretty much even, which is the normal lane conditions for most places will give you now, most bowling centers you go to are trying to give you an even condition, which is for any type of bowler. Then you go to the number three, which where there's light oil out here, and then there's a real heavy strip of oil down the middle of the lane. Can somebody tell me what this is? kind of lane conditions. Paper. Paper. It's, when you throw the ball out here, what happens? If you throw the ball out here where there's a light oil, the ball will hook anywhere out here, but it won't go past this line. So they stop the oil where the pins are, half, halfway down the lane here, and as the ball comes to the pocket, it hits this oil line. It's not going to go anywhere. Like, uh, tourist, I think, the things you see on TV, it's not really that. No, they can do it. They, do they don't it. do it as uh, 
that you can actually see. Some places you can walk in and you can actually see that on the lane. You can actually see where the shot is on the lane. That it's so obvious. Because you get you ball in one house and in an easy house you're an average 200 and you're going to ball in a hard hard house and you're an average 180, 190. Now what, what's really your average? Is your average 200 or is your average the 190? For the right hander and here for the left hander you throw a three quarter or a high roller. That's, I think most of you, that's what most of the people in here throw. This is probably the better one to throw. You get more pin action, you get more turn on the ball than this. This type of roll, will, when you throw this type of ball, it seems to roll in a very, very straight line with very little finish, but it, it has to be a good pocket hit to carry. A lot of full rollers, if there's a lot of oil, they have problems. They really have to go to the extreme outside to get to the pocket. With this type of line, with this type of roll, you get a lot of more pin action. The higher you can bring this roll, if you like Dwayne's roll, okay? If anybody else is Dwayne's bowling ball, his roll is stripped right next to this finger. And if you ever hear the thumping noise, he's not hitting the thumb, he's hitting this finger. Because he goes right in a straight line here. He uses only this half of the ball. Now this so you see what kind of revolutions he gets on his ball. You know, there are ones that will come down further, and there are ones that will come down this further. The higher you can keep that roll, the better roll, the, the better action you're going to get on the ball and on the pins. So now we're going to get down here. This. We're back with more of the Bowlers Gazette, our special edition from Penn State campus and the bowling camp. With me now is Art Bennett, who was one of the bowlers, one of the eight bowlers from Delaware who attended the camp. And this was your first year at the camp. Art, what'd you think of it? It was pretty good. Uh, learned a lot of stuff up there and uh, got a little better. What did they, if you wanted to pick out one thing that they really improved in your game, what would it be? Walking to the approach line straight. That was um, the main thing that you got out of it? Yeah. And since you've been back, have you done much bowling? Yeah, I'd, we've been bowling every weekend, and leagues start up now, so, yeah, it's been a lot better. You've noticed an improvement in your game? Yeah. Did they get you to slow down a little yeah. bit? Yeah. That was one of the things I was wondering if they were going to work on. Out of the coaches that was up there, who would you say was the best? They were all good. Uh, probably Pat and Dwayne, and mm, all of them were good. Which one helped you the most? Pat. She did? Yeah. Now you were in the um, second section, I think. Yeah. What was your section called? Um, high rollers. High rollers? Yeah. Uh, when you went into the instruction room, what did they work on with your group? Uh, they worked on almost everything. Everything on the videotapes and stuff like that. Uh, did you find that the videotapes Yeah, helped they you? helped a lot. That way you can't say, I don't do that. Yeah. You can see that you you do that. Yeah. Uh, with the tournaments coming up in the fall, and uh, we've had a number of bowlers who've gone to the camps, do you think you're going to get up there this year? I hope so. Last year wasn't too good, but this year would probably be a lot better. Well, I don't think last year was too bad. I think yeah. you did pretty good in one yeah. of our TV tournaments, yeah. didn't you? We have a plaque for that today. Matter of fact, I believe you beat out the next person we're going to interview, and that'll be Don Lacombe. We'll see him right after this. Mm -hmm. With me now is Don Lacombe, and he's going to try to explain to us what happened last year in that TV match. Don, how you doing? <laughs> All right. What happened on TV last year? I don't know, a turkey <laughs> did something, <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe one of the, I have a, I have a theory on what happened there, and you, you may like this theory. I don't think Art will like it or some of the other bowlers, but uh, in all the matches we taped that day, we had four left-handers and for some reason, none of the four left-handers bowled very well. They all lost their matches. So maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. the lanes that were, helps out a little bit. Maybe the lanes were messed up. Of course, the funny thing is the lanes were done by a left-handed bowler. So I don't understand why the left-hand side would be so bad, but that might have had something to do with it. 
When you were up at Penn State this year, did they work on lane conditions? Yeah, every day they change the lane conditions a little bit. One day they put out a block, and the next day they make it a little dry. But the fir very first day we were up there, they hadn't been oiled in a few weeks, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, as hot as it was, yeah. they weren't. Oh my God, might as well have been bowling on the beach somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since you went to the camp last year, did you notice any changes from last year to this year? Well, this year they made my approach a little bit longer. They said I looked like jelly because I was really crunched all up. And so they got me back near the end of the approach. Now a lot smoother. Do you think the camp ran better this year than it did last year? Or was it Not really. I think it was about the same. They did the same program and everything. Did the videotape help you any? Yeah. <laughs> got you to see they, what people were saying? Well, when they cut you up, they, they get you. Uh, one of the questions I, I didn't ask any of the other ones because I didn't think about it. Um, the coaching you got up there, how does that differ with the coaching you get down here? I mean, the coaches that you have on Saturday morning, were they basically telling you the same thing that they did up there, <laughs> but maybe you weren't listening as well because you know the ones down here? Yeah, they, they tell you the same thing, but you never really listen. When you go up to Penn State, it's more of an adventure, and you're more open to all the learning. And of course, you're, you're being taught by known people. Yeah, uh, Pat McClellan. And Dad or Mom or somebody that you know real <laughs> well. You don't seem to pay as much attention to them. Who did you like the best out of all the coaches that was up there? Well, I liked Dwayne Fisher. He was a lefty, and I also liked Don Farrell, who was the head coach. He really helped us out a lot. Yeah, we did an interview with uh, Mr. Farrell. And thank you, Don, for being on the show. Right thank now you. we're going to do an interview with Dwayne Fisher, and you're going to see that right now. Now we have Dwayne Fisher, who is one of the coaches at the Penn State bowling camp. Dwayne, I understand you just did rather well in the tournaments not too long ago. Uh, yeah, in June I was up in Long Island. I bowled in the 36th uh, Eastern Open, and it uh, was a 69-game tournament, and I beat out Johnny Petraglia for uh, first place. It was a, we bowled for seven days. It was a long tournament, but it was, you know, ended up to be worth it. And we understand another tournament you did rather well in. Yeah, this weekend I bowled up in uh, Massapequa, New York, uh, for the Eastern Region Tournament this weekend, and I finished third. And this time Johnny Petragli was first, and Tony Therese came in second. What do you think of the Penn State camp? Is this your first year as coach? No, I was here last year, and uh, it seemed like this year was running a little smoother. Last year was about, you know, we we're just trying to get some kinks ironed out. And this year it seems like we got everything going and the kids are having a good time. Now we understand uh, there's like three different levels mm -hmm. of children here and you work with them on all three levels. Right. There's three coaches and we divide everybody up into three groups. We have, uh, the, you know, the lower average bowlers, then the, the middle average and the higher average. And each, each um, coach will go with everybody at different times. So in other words, everybody, each group gets uh, each coach's opinion, and then so that gives them a little, you know, a little more, you know, whatever. <laughs> and each one can work on their own level. Right. If they're interested right. in right. really learning, they can do that. Right. The bowlers that want to learn, you know, we can take them on one-on-one, -on -one, work a lot with them, the bowlers that are here to, you know, just bowl and have a good time, then they can they can be by themselves, have a good time, and learn just a little bit about bowling. But if they're, if they're serious and they, you know, really want to learn about it, then, then they can learn a lot, too. Okay, Dwayne, thanks a lot. We hope to see you on TV okay. maybe this winter. Okay, thanks. I'll be out there. We'll be back with more right after this. Here we are with some of the instructions, and the kids are in the bowling center. That's Art there. Doesn't look to be any better than he was before. He must have just started getting some instruction on that one. Yeah, and there's Joy, Joy Palambi in the uh, background with the red shirt. She's one of the main instructors. She's a pro bowler, too. I think she has a pro shop, too, in New Jersey. Well, I don't know about her pro shop. That was little Billy um, Thomas Macon, and he's, he's from Pennsylvania. 
this was one of the times, I think, when they were having that tournament, wasn't it? Yeah, we were having the tournament. There's not on the lanes that we're on. Here comes the most famous bowler right here. <laughs> Getting ready to throw the ball. Hey, he doesn't have a hop. Yeah, that was over with. When did they get you out of there? First or second day? Second day. Little Billy, he's, he's gonna be good. He's only 12 years old. There he is right there. He's a, good, a girl all the way the boy. That's Wendy Beck. Wendy, she's probably the best bowler in the girls. She has nice form and everything. I don't know about the ball release. Did you say you spend about six hours each day? Yeah, at the bowling center? usually six hours. Were you broken down into shifts? Um, yeah, we, we bowled on different lanes once it's time. There's Mark Burns, he's from Price. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't like that shot. What did they call him up there? Sergeant, we called him Sarge. There's Donald Lacombe, he was just on here not too long ago. Plus he just got done throwing a strike. There's uh, Mr. Callahan over there. Somewhere. Callahan sitting in the back with his little hat on. There's Coach Fire on the background. Here he comes right now. I guess not. And he is giving him some instructions. Telling him not to pull the ball over. I can tell what that was all about. Who's this guy? You know him? No, 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 I don't know him. Yeah, Mike Lambert or Scott Lambert, I can't think of. He's his, they say his cousin or uncle is Jack Lambert on Pittsburgh Steelers. There's Mr. Callahan over on the left-hand side. Yeah. There's Coach Farrell. Yeah, he, he, he was the best coach, I think, down there. He's been there a good while, too. Yeah, I've seen some of the pictures in the background. There's Gary walking back there. There you are. Uh, there's, 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 there's Dwayne Wayne. Fisher. That's Dwayne Fisher. That's the best bowler probably be in the next couple of years. He'll probably be up there. He'll be another Earl. There he is. There's Wendy Beck. She's the best bowler for the girls. That's not and here we have Trisha Lacombe bowling. Yeah, Trisha, she was in the Turkey's group. They, she, she had a little bit of troubles down there. She dropped the ball most of the time. She dropped, I don't know what was wrong with her thumb hole, but she used to drop the ball. Every time she threw it, it, stick, it would stick and it would fall with the eyes. So I don't know, I don't know what they did. And here we have Michelle Turner. She rolls down in both side lanes. Hey, Michelle, she is. This is her second year at the camp. She went last year. Yeah, she, I, I don't know why you pay attention that much to her. And then we have Timmy Roberts, who's from Prince Yeah, he, he won, he won the turkey division that we had at Torres. He won the turkey division, beating out, beating out, um, some girl in the turkey division. She, sh she should have beat him, though. Who's in your division? Uh, S S Scott, Reggie Armbruster, Regis. Regis. Regis on. They called him Regis. Jim Callahan. Jim Callahan came in second. Jim Callahan always up. ends up in second. Yeah. One of these days, maybe after he's going to the camp this year, maybe this year he'll end up in first place. And since we see Coach there's, Farrell there's, there. There's Derek, his little kid. He told us all about, when we were down there, he told us all about the football players on the football team. He was one little kid to be with. Now we're going to listen to Coach Farrell as he gives some instructions to some of the bowlers. Perfect. Right on. You understand? Okay. What you're not doing is you're not allowing for, you're not compensating for your drift on your first ball. So you're coming, you're starting right, but you're coming out wrong because each person has their own unique you know, I, number. When I walk, I drift to the, to the left five boards the last time you did. So that's why I moved your five boards to get you back to the head pin. So wherever you were starting last time on your last shot, you start four boards left of that now and then come on back with a strike ball. That's it. Don't pull it. Stroke it past you. Did you come out of it right? Out, and that's getting caught up in your thumb right there. I see where it's stuck. Okay. You got any powder at all? It starts here and then it slides down to there. And then, then it sticks right to there. You got any powder? You got some rosin? Put it on the back end? Just put it here. I'll show you how to do it. This is the way you apply it.
Well, take your thumb and just push it down like that on both sides of it. Oh, we need a little powder right here. Oh, whose is that? Just like that on both That's it. Oh, ripper. Good ball. Okay, now don't 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 just sit down and leave it. Get the full extension and lift of the ball when you go. But the, your techniques are fine now. We'll get the lift once you feel comfortable in what we're doing now, okay? Pick up the ball. We are back at Penn State campus, and with me now is Mr. Don Farrell, who is the head coach of the Penn State bowling team. How many years has Penn State had a bowling team? We've had a bowling program and an intercollegiate program since 1962. So we're about 21 years old. And how many years has the bowling camp been in operation? This is our fourth year for the bowling camp. It started on a uh, sort of an idea that we had in conjunction with continuing education. They were bringing in kids from all over the country for other camps. And uh, we'd had a successful intercollegiate bowling program for three years. And we decided that if we tried to bring in kids from around the eastern part of the United States and see if they couldn't have as much fun at a bowling camp as they were having some of the swimming and diving in other camps. So this is how the inception, this is how we got started. How has the program progressed over the years? I think it's progressed rather well. Uh, we started with one camp and each year now we've gone to two camps. We're a little reluctant about a third camp because of the uh, different times at high schools and things are done across the uh, eastern part of the country. We can't accumulate enough kids at a particular time, but we like the size of the camp we have between 50 and 60 now, uh, twice a year, and it's been uh, very productive. As the coach of the Penn State team, are you looking at any of these bowlers as future Penn State bowlers? Uh, not to get myself caught up uh, in a recruiting where I always look at young prospective talent. Uh, I think this is one of the real advantages that we have of having a camp. It exposes them to the, the Penn State University, uh, a collegiate climate, and a program that has been very successful as far as collegiate bowling is concerned, and I quite naturally look uh, for the young kids that would like to come here and see how they're doing. Sure. Coach, a lot of the junior bowlers don't realize that many of the colleges have intercollegiate programs and that some of the colleges do have scholarships for this. How many colleges do you know of in the eastern area do have bowling programs? I would have to say we have uh, probably about 150. Uh, they're not a publicized, they're usually a club sport. Uh, a lot of them have intercollegiate programs that have been started in the last two years. The uh, Washington, D.C. area has Howard, it has GW, it has the University of Maryland. Uh, we have Gettysburg, we have Delaware, we have several schools down around that particular area. Navy even has one on the co-ed team. And when you come up towards east, we get into Philadelphia. There's a lot of schools. Uh, they all don't have the intercollegiate programs, but they primarily all have the club sport programs that are in a collegiate bowling conference in the eastern coast somewhere. How many of uh, the colleges, universities give scholarships in this area? Are you, do you know of any of the other ones? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I believe in our, our, our particular area, the only schools that give uh, financial aid as far as scholarships are concerned is Temple University, and I believe that's only in their women's program. And Robert Morris College uh, did in both programs last year. That's in Pittsburgh. But I believe they've discontinued that since now. Most of the schools are getting away from giving scholarships for intercollegiate bowling or club bowling, and they're giving financial aid towards tuition, et cetera, like that, through different uh, uh, grants, and uh, our bowling associations give out awards each year from the different associations. They're using those to accumulate funds for bowling scholarships now. Coach, we thank you for being here with us on the Junior Bowlers Gazette, and we enjoyed our stay up here at Penn State, and hopefully next year we'll be able to come up again. Well, we're very glad to have you, and we welcome you back, and keep bringing those nice kids that you have down there, and I'm hopeful that someday we'll have them in our intercollegiate program or someplace in the country in one of the competitive intercollegiate programs. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Well, there's our show from Penn State, way up in the northern part of Pennsylvania. Dave, going to go there next year? Yeah, I'm planning on going next year. Well, we're going to see more of Dave next week on the Junior Bowers Gazette. Next week we'll be back to our normal schedule. The Bowers Gazette will be on at 6 o'clock on Friday and will be on at 2.30 on Saturday. The Junior Bowers Gazette will be on at 6.30 on Friday night and will be on at 3 o'clock on Saturday. On the Bowers Gazette next week, you're going to see a special exhibition match that we taped. This was done at Holiday Lanes. You're going to see Rita Justice. 
bowling against John Thompson Jr. And on the Junior Bowlers Gazette next week, you're going to see our co-host, Dave Feliciano, and he'll be bowling against Dave Carter in the Junior Top 10 tournament that was taped last May. And this will be the Junior Boys Division match. We'll see you then.